Peace. Oh, hello there. This is Emi Chicken, and today we're going to do a mini PC review. This time of the HPC, HPC Powerbox Light. Lite. How does this compare against the competition, and can it compete? <laughs> In today's review, we'll find out. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Here's the box, and this is an awkward package to open. Much like Beverly after drinking a shand. And this is what arrived. The HPC Powerbox Lite. The box looks very similar to a computer power supply. And on the back of the box, we have a clue to its specs. According to this, it's a grey 16 gigs, 512 gigs... Um... So this mini PC is wrapped in thin plastic, and it's surprisingly light to 469 grams. We're also given an instruction manual in multiple languages. Unfortunately, it's mostly empty, with information of basic use and how to use the VESA bracket. And there's more things in this box. It's the power adapter. It's a switching supply providing 19 volts, 3.42 amps, and a maximum of just under 65 watts. We're given a VESA bracket, so we can attach the mini PC to the back of the monitor, a bag of screws, a cable for the power supply, and a HDMI cable around one meter in length. So let's take a look at the specs. According to the Ace PC's website, we have a four core eight thread processor with a max turbo of 3.8 gigahertz. With double the threads and execution units of the N100, it may leave us with a very nice PC for emulation. The two and a half inch SATA bay is a nice addition. However, a lot of crucial information is lacking on this website, such as NVMe speed, HDMI version, and so on. The CPU is also from 2018, so it may lack in some features that are present in newer computers. All right, so it looks like we've got a metallic texture. However, the case itself is a hard plastic. On the front, we have a quality assurance sticker, the power switch, BIOS reset pinhole, the three and a half inch audio jack, two USB ports, followed by a USB-C. We don't know the speeds of these currently, but we'll check them out later. On the right side, we have some air intake holes and this VGA port, which can be useful for legacy displays. On the back side is where most of the action is. A nice handful. Where we have the DC in for power, Ethernet LAN for network, two HDMI, and two USB ports. Underneath that, we have the fan exhaust. And to the right of that, Kensington. Kensington. We have more holes for air intake down here. And on the underneath, we got some labels. The model name is CK11, and we have in black and white our CPU. Down here we have the mounting holes for the VESA bracket, and some rubber feet. These are rounded and remind me of Smarties. It's about time for the size comparison. The HPC Powerbox Lite is slightly larger than the Geekcom A5. It's about the same size as the GMK Tech K8, and much larger than the Chewy Lark Box. It's absolutely dwarfed by the Ace Magic AD08, and here is a Nintendo Game Boy. This game is amazing. Here's a banana. Some crazy AI robot from the future. Bit of marzipan. And a Roy Bosch tea bag. Bosch. The Powerbox Lite is roughly four times the size of a Roy Bosch tea bag. Once connected to a monitor and speakers, we can boot it up for the first time. Maybe a good idea to have a cup of tea and a snack ready, as it'll take around 10 minutes to get through the initial setup screens. Here we choose language, region, and keyboard settings, accept some kind of license agreement, and then enter a username. We did not get the telemetry screen, so it may be wise to use a third party tool later to adjust these settings. After a cup of tea and a banana, at last, we can use our computer. And in the system settings, we can verify our CPU, Windows 11 Pro is installed, and to our surprise, it's active. So usually with a mini PC, we need to go online to activate it, but there may be some OEM companies that have a Windows key bound to the motherboard, which will bypass the need for this activation process. There were no signs of bloat, and we found no tampering in the edge settings, but the first thing we did was go online, check ninite.com, and then download some antivirus and anti-malware tools. We did full scans using anti-malware bytes, AVG, and Avast, and each of them verified our system was clean. We then updated Windows to the latest version, and now we can test it out. This mini PC is pretty decent for Office, so you can write some documents, or make a spreadsheet. We can do some 2D artwork with something like Photoshop or Krita, and as long as we don't use any 3D tools like Blender or 3D Max, this mini PC is quite nippy. We can also use Reaper. As the CPU is comparable to an i7-4770, tracking will be perfectly possible. Mixing will be too, as long as we don't use too many plugins. 
Of course, we can do some shopping, here's some socks on AliExpress, and this computer is available on Ace PC's website. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, it's not available on Amazon, but we can check out the competition. Moving on to video streaming, Amazon Prime loads up, and the HD button is lit. Netflix. Now some info. And finally, YouTube in 4K. Even without using the AV1 codec, it's running rather well, but there is a problem. This mini PC cannot output at 4K with 60Hz. The highest it goes at that resolution is 30. But if you're 120Hz at 1080p, you should be good to go. Now for the benchmarks. While this PC's performance isn't going to set the world on fire, it sits comfortably in between the N100 and the i5-12450H. While it pales in comparison to the Ryzen CPUs in these benchmarks, this system is currently going for around $330. Here's the Cinebench. And the high scores in Dismark really surprised us. As for the USB ports on the front, these are in fact USB 2. And if you want USB 3, you need to go around to the back of the mini PC. HW Info now, which shows LP DDR3 rather than the DDR4 that was on the spec sheet on their website. Looking at the Wi-Fi now, we had good connectivity to our router in the next room with 100% signal strength. Our Bluetooth controller worked without issue, and let's play some games. We'll first start off with some 2D titles. First one, Streets of Rage 4. Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Dave the Diver. While this game is playable at 1080p, 720p gives us full speed. Moving out to King of Fighters 15, this game is not playable in either 1080p or 720p. We love Katamari at 1080p. Moving on to some eSports, here's Dota 2. At 720p good settings, we're still not hitting 60fps, but we can still have a good time. Rocket League, 1080p high quality settings. Fortnite. This game sits at around 40 to 55 FPS in 720p, but if you bump up resolution to 1080p, it's still surprisingly playable. Counter Strike 2. With FPS averaging around 30 to 40, it won't have the competitive edge. Saying that, you can still get a game in. Let's take a look inside. To open it up, there's only two screws in the back. And now we can lift this off. Here we have the two and a half inch SATA drive bay, but to get in further, there are three more screws. Let's remove this. And there it is. So it's nice to see we have a heatsink on our NVMe drive. And next to that, a place where we can add another NVMe stick. Be 2280 in length. And here's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth controller. Removing the heatsink from the SSD is fairly simple. Just remove the rubber bands. Then don't pull but slide off the heatsink. The included NVMe is one from Bywin. And at first we thought it was non-brand. But if we look further, they're actually responsible for both Acer and HB SSDs. Just gonna add my Batacera drive. Let's check if we can open the other side. Using a small, flat-headed screwdriver, we can pull up the rubber feet to expose some screws. Give it a good screw, and she will get turned on. Once they're all out, we can pop this open. Ooh. After removing two screws, we can take off this fan, and if we need to, we could reapply thermal paste. Unfortunately, we could not find the DDR4 memory, and as it's not identified in HW Info as separate slots, it's more likely that the memory is soldered to the board as LP DDR3 instead. Here's a quick look at the BIOS, and we can only choose English. Hey, 
While there are plenty of options to choose from, such as settings for overclocking and raising the TDP, the CPU was released back in 2018, so many quality of life improvements such as Secure Boot and Wake on LAN are sadly not included. So if you need a mini PC to play Valorant, you're not going to find it here. But what we do have in its absence is actually quite plentiful, and with the precision we can control the fan speeds at, this would suit a Linux operating system perfectly. The drive that we attached earlier had Batacera installed, so let's give it a boot. So Batacera works as a great front end for all the emulators. We had no problems with the Wi-Fi chip, we could easily connect to the network. However, we did have issues using Bluetooth. So if you have a controller, you may need to use a dongle or go wired. Let's test out some emulation. First up, Condor Amiga, running at full speed. Sega Dreamcast. Sega Thomas Wave. And yes, that is Marco from Metal Slug. Sega Metal 3. It could support 3D games on MAME, this Tekken Tag Tournament. And even PSP in 4 times resolution. PlayStation 2, upscale to 1080p. And here's God of War 2. And if you want this running at full speed, we need to knock it down to a 2 times upscale. Xbox. GameCube. Wii. And Wii U. And while the system won't run PlayStation 3 or Switch at full speed, it can play plenty of other systems very well. At idle, the system stays around 43 degrees, and it's exceptionally quiet. While pulling around 9 watts from the wall. Under load, the CPU stays quite cool at 67 degrees Celsius, and the fan is audible. But even then, this is one of the quietest mini PCs we've had on the channel. Pulling 40 watts from the wall. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The Ace PC Powerbox Lite is quiet, it stays cool, has a fast NVMe and a nice array of storage options. We also like the easy access to the board and also the VGA port, giving us a nice PC that can be used with Batacera and a legacy CRT monitor. Now for the cons. This CPU is showing its age as it lacks newer features that are nowadays taken for granted. The 4K display is limited to a laughable 30Hz and the Ace PC website doesn't give the correct specifications for the product. If you'd like to purchase one of these, they're available on the website, but right now the supply seems quite limited to those living in Europe, in countries with the two-pronged power plugs. We've left you a link down below, so once US supply is available, you should be able to get in an order. We do have a coupon for 10% off, and you can use this once the item is in the checkout. As for alternatives, it looks like this camera unit may be extremely similar to this Ace PC. It has the same CPU, however there may be differences with NVMe and system noise. If you're wanting better game performance, this Geekcom A5 may be your cup of tea, and it sits at only $399 on Amazon. If you wanted to keep with Intel, this GMK Tech M3 has up-to-date specs, and it's at $339. The Powerbox Lite sits in between both the N100 and the i5-12450H for performance. In a way, it's the N100 on steroids. While this mini PC did surprise us, we think it may be priced slightly high, and if it was under $300, it'd definitely be worth getting. 
Thanks for watching the video to the end, and if you can't tell, we really like our small computers, especially if we can get a great deal. Newton Town. Hi, John. Let us know your thoughts down below, and if you have any requests on things you'd like to see, please bang out a comment. If you'd like to join us on our Patreon or Discord, here are the QR codes. He is doing the PP dance. No, I'm not doing the PP dance, but here are another couple of our videos for you to check out. Give me a kiss. No, I don't want to. This has been Nimi Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.